Totem poles are intricate wood carvings built by Northwest Region Indigenous people near present-day British Columbia, Canada. The poles had a varying range of meanings and purposes which usually only made sense to the people for whom they were built. Totem poles were recorded as being seen by Europeans just prior to the 19th century. Although their exact date of conception is unknown, the Northwest indigenous people had been making totem poles long before foreigners had realized. Following the migration of metal tools from Europe, the production curve of carvings increased for a period. For reasons unknown, there are many misconceptions about the purposes and meanings for totem poles. Some believe that the indigenous people idolized them as some sort of sacrilegious god, but that is not true. Many totem poles were in place to represent a story, honor someone within the community, or were a creative piece of public artwork. Another common falsehood surrounding totem poles is the saying, low man on the totem pole, which generally refers to someone in a group having little authority, but holds no truth to its reference of totem poles. Totem poles, because they were made by so many different people, do not have one standard meaning, and the position of power on the pole could be at the top, bottom, or somewhere in between. Totem poles had a wide range in their size. Some were no taller than a child, while others reached heights over 60 feet tall. In addition to the range in size, they varied in their functionality. Some were weight-bearing posts as seen in Edward Curtis's The Land of the Headhunters, and others were just standalone poles. In the late 19th century, there was a large push to assimilate all indigenous people and take care of the Indian problem once and for all. One practice which almost suffered extinction from these policies was the craft of totem pole construction. In the beginning of the 20th century, Edward Curtis and many others were leading the movement on ethnography and documentation on the existence of dying cultures. After indigenous representations became a part of popular culture, the demand for totem poles was renewed by collectors and museums. Today, totem poles are built and constructed as monuments to lost culture and remembrance for what was taken.